Well, hello everybody and welcome to our coverage of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Um, if you've been with us all day here, then uh, uh, we, you know that we had a rather interesting end to the uh, IMSA uh, Mission and Pilot Challenge and uh, that's thrown everything a little bit up in the air, but we've got sound and vision together right now and uh, looks like we've got cars on the pit lane we're having to shuffle officials and our, our commentary commentary team across to the opposite side of the track of course however the good news is jeremy shaw and i are here in the booth that little shower of rain that certainly impacted the end of the michelin pilot challenge season race there jeremy has seemingly cleared and left us with a damp and tricky surface for the first part of the qualifying for the 26th running of the Mortel Petit Le Mans. Indeed so, and uh, it seems to have uh, at least stopped raining out there at the moment, uh, but the track, track certainly is going to be a little bit damp, uh, particularly for the start of the GT sessions, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether it dries up at all. There's not much of a breeze even now, is there? Um, yeah, temperature is, is not very high either, so it's going to take a while to dry out there. The pit lane in particular looks uh, looked very damp indeed, and you know, the racetrack here, I mean, there's no you know, sort of patches of dry, but it's it's mainly pretty, pretty damp out there. It's going to be very, very tricky mm. for all of these drivers. Well, we are just outside of Brazelton, Georgia, which, depending on traffic, is about an hour and a half from downtown, um, or three hours, depending <laughs> on what time of day. And we've got 12 quarters, two and a half miles, 2.54, if you want to be absolutely spot on. Uh, and there's a little bit of a, something for everybody here in terms of corners. Very fast at turn one, particularly for the prototype cars and uh, barely a lift there for them as they turn and go up the hill through the signature S's uh, and turn five to turn six and seven. Seven, the most important corner on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, on the circuit because it leads on to the longest straight and then another opportunity to pass down at turns uh, 10A and turn B. Let's check in with our pit lane reporters. Uh, Shea Adam, but first Nick Damon, who has some good news if you're a Ferrari fan. Uh, looking, we're well, standing on the pit, actually, uh, looking down on the uh, the, br the bright blue, I think the Tour de France blue, I says, is a Ferrari, uh, with the tricolour sweeping across the wing. It's the Settler 296, the car that was uh, uh, reduced to constituent parts, or more or less, set the rear was on uh, first practice yesterday. It is all together, it's all up and running, there's a driver on board, and I'm sure he'll be leaving quite soon. And of course, at the moment, just so you know, John, everybody who is leaving is leaving on, on uh, wet tyres. A uh, new subframe came in from Risi Competizione uh, for that car. Shea Adam is our other voice down in the pit lane. I'm, I'm not sure we've even quite got ourselves plugged, uh, plugged up for this after the shenanigans at the end of the previous session. What can you tell us, Shea? Hello. Hello. Um, well, <laughs> let's start off with the fact that everyone is on wet tires as Nick Damon hit. And if it does get dry, you cannot come in and put on dry weather tires because once you've left the pit lane, you've got what you've got for this qualifying session. 15 minutes and all of our GT cars going out on the racetrack together. A couple of people to keep an eye on through this. Jack Hawksworth is going to be exceedingly careful, but also go for another pole position because he's already gotten three this year. But he is doing the qualifying duties for the champion elect number 14, Vassar Sullivan and Lexus. They need to cross the start line tomorrow in order to be guaranteed 2023 GTD Pro Champions. They also won this race last year. The sister car is Aaron Tielitz, so that's going to be a very strong lineup from Lexus. And one other car to keep an eye on in this qualifying session, he's gotten the last three consecutive poles in GTD, including the overall GT pole at Indy, and he's gotten pole here the last two years. So keep an eye on Madison Snow and the number one Paul Miller BMW. Thank you, Shay. Shay Adam down in the pit lane. 
Um, I've just had another thought about the end of that pilot race, which I, I need to put out my head for the moment and concentrate on what's going on here. It's still quite wet, and yeah. at parts of the circuit, it's raining quite heavily still as well. Let's talk about the format of the sessions. Have you heard, as you heard Shea said, what you've got is what you've got here. Um, no changes to be made to the car, so there's no choice other than to go out on wet weather tyre, unless you sit in the pit lane with a set of dries on and wait. And then, then your gamble is you finish at the back because you don't go out because you don't set a lap, or you think it gets dry enough with two or three laps to go before the end of the 15-minute session that you send your, your driver out to give it a shot. But to be honest, I'm not sure it's worth doing that. You put a set of tyres on that aren't part of your allocation, which is the wet weather tyres, and you will probably get 10 minutes, even if it dries up quite quickly. The Michelin wets are pretty durable and very good in what we would call the intermediate style conditions. No intermediate tyres for any classes. It's just wets and slicks. Uh, turn a BMW. WeatherTech turned a BMW number 96. Don't think I'm harking back to what's going on. Uh, they've just got a penalty for uh, blowing the pit lane speed limit, and uh, that'll be uh, a drive through 10 seconds, uh, 10 k's rather, over the speed limit. So out on the track at the moment, we have the GTDs and the GTD Pros. Now, that's the full GTD, uh, GTD field, and that's 27 cars. So it isn't going to be as easy as you might think, even though we've split the field, Jeremy Shaw, to find a, a little bit of space to get your fast lap in. Yeah, that's you know, that's going to be the key, is getting a, a good lap in here. Uh, the, there's going to be you know, there's very different, variant grip levels out there at the moment, and some of these drivers are going to be happy in these conditions. I mean, all the, all the practice so far this week has been in the dry, I think, uh, hasn't it? I can't remember now. Yes. Uh, so, um, you yeah, know, it's going to be, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's it's going to be a steep learning curve for these for these drivers because some of them have been, been here before, but quite a few of them haven't uh, on this track. Some of them haven't been on this race track at all before this weekend. So learning it in the, in the uh, damp conditions, not even full wet, it's just damp right now, but certainly damp enough that... Uh, I think it's got to be uh, wet weather tyres. I think we heard from Shay that everybody is on wet weather tyres. And even though there's, it's not full wet out there by any means, so it's just going to be tricky. Tricky. Yeah. Do you think, would you have gambled uh, and, and waited to see if a dry line came and just, uh, just set yourself up with a set of lightly used Michelin uh, slick tyres? Uh, judge, uh, just judging by that uh, Lexus going through turn one, there was a little bit of spray off the back of the wheels there, so now I think it's got to be wet. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's cool out there as well. If it's a bit warmer, then maybe you'd consider it, but I think, you know, I think wet's is going to be, but you know, the wet's aren't, the wet weather tyres aren't going to like this particularly much. No. So, I mean, that, You're not going to get ten laps out of the mire. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's not a full wet tyre that Michelin brings, is it, to the for this championship? It's, uh, Look how quick you're getting a drying line, though. Yeah, I tell you what, the next... It's going to be a tougher choice for the next categories. Yeah. Much tougher. Uh, 75 on the track, that's Fahrenheit, and 66 in the air. That is 24 Celsius on the track and 19 in the air as Bill Oberlin goes to the top of GTD. But there's two pro cars quicker than him. That being Gilles Gounon for WeatherTech Racing and at the top of the shop at the moment, Vassa Sullivan's Lexus. Those Lexus RCF GT3s have been quick uh, all week. Uh, there's championship implications. They don't need to do anything silly. So get out there, get your laps in, make sure you've got a car to start the race tomorrow, the 26th running of Motul Petit Le Mans. The first race in 1998 in the, as the prelude to the American Le Mans series in 1999 and the start of my USA Odyssey that has... Uh, continued right through to 2023. Extraordinary, actually. He's been talking to Scott Atherton uh, earlier on today, part of that. And mem many memories uh, come back to me when I come to this place. It's uh, really uh, some great stories that I 
think we still have to wait a little while for the statute of limitations to to expire in those early years. It was uh, a time of great discovery for us as broadcasters and the technology was changing. The American Le Mans series radio web on dial-up internet. Can you believe it? Quite ex extraordinary stuff back in those days. And uh, evolving into the global broadcasts that uh, we have today. As uh, somebody rightly said, I think, earlier in the week, or actually it might have been the uh, week before last at Rensport. Ah, yes, uh, it's taken that internet broadcasting thing, which you guys were at the front of um, with Radio Le Mans, and then IMSA, or well, LMS Radio. It's, it's just taken 25 years for that to become an overnight sensation, which is probably about right. So waiting for the temperatures to come up on the tyres. Jack Hawksworth improves again, Jeremy, 123.8. And Dorian Palm for the Iron Dames oh. in the Lamborghini. Best of the uh, GTD non-pro cars with a 24 flat. Very impressive. Now this Very said, impressive. we heard Rahel Frey say earlier in the week that whoever was the quickest between the three drivers in that car would get the chance to qualify because they want to qualify up front. And Dorian Pan, who has been an absolute superstar, very unassuming, quiet, but behind the wheel is very quick indeed, with a drier, much drier line now. You might have been able to gamble if you were going out now with six and a half minutes to go on a set of slicks and off goes the number 96 BMW. And that was the car that got the drive through uh, earlier on. And that was at turn one, just overcooking it a tiny bit, but back on the track for Bill Oberlin. And Jack Hawks was in the groove here. I mean, this is this is good Yorkshire weather. <laughs> High up, lad. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit that too much speed on the entry there. Turn perhaps a little bit late in these conditions for Michael Dynan there. Uh, Michael Dynan, sorry, not Bill yeah. Oberlin. My apologies, yeah. one cut. But, uh, Dorian Pan on another quick one here, seriously Jeremy. Impressive. I mean, first time here for Dorian, and uh, to be uh, right up there at the sharp end, uh, that is seriously impressive. I mean, look, she's ahead of Mirko Bolarotti, also in a Lamborghini, of course. And um, wow, well, that's, that's a good a point. That's the pro car. Effort. Yeah, exactly. Mirko Bolarotti is effectively a um, factory a driver. Factory yeah, driver. Is, yes. Yeah, yeah. Being involved with the testing of the LMTH right to the edge of the track. Whoa, oh, look big, at that. big awesome. slide. Torian is uh, enjoying this. The, the tyres will have come up to temperature now and the tread blocks will be moving around. As she turned into turn one, the left-hand side tyres, the left-hand side Michelin wet, were on the white line. Now that in itself is brave. In the middle of the corner, the car started to twitch and she had to open her hands just a little bit to get the car back and continue with this lap. The no most no fuss. The left rear was, at least. Not sure about the front. She was pretty much full up. Is it not getting up the hill, wasn't she? Absolutely you know? outstanding. <laughs> Minimum green flag time. Ian James, look at that. Ian James has matched Jack Hawksworth's time. So fellow wow. uh, English-born, Ian James, actually has, has US nationality now, lives in Phoenix, has been over here for many, many years. But uh, yeah, he matched in time to, to, the, to the thousandths of a second. 123.168 for Jack Hawksworth and for Ian James. Oh, but for... Sorry, Jeremy, go ahead. Uh, uh, just to say that Hawks was in it first, so he's still on top of the charts. Oh, so when you said matched, you actually meant down to the th to the to thousand. The thousand. <laughs> right, okay. uh, off for the race's edge, uh, NSX. Uh, that was just a little bit too far to the edge of turn one and drags it back. It was Kyle Marcelli. Yeah, I was uh, just going to say there that uh, Dorian Pan had put, has put in another quicker lap for her but it yeah. hasn't moved her any further up but she's down to a 23.7 now yeah she's half a second quicker than Mirko Bertolotti in the pro car very very impressive indeed Oops. now the Gilles Cunon driven AMG with issues now I've seen people in qualifying Oh, I know what he's doing. It, th this is what he's doing. This is this is a, an online racer trick that um, 
that Shilkanon is doing. I think he's cooling down his right-hand side tyres on the grass. Seriously? That is very, very brave right indeed. Right side tyres or left side? Well, he, gonna, I didn't say cooling and left side tyres. Well, he, he, may be doing it, he may be doing it both sides. It's, uh, it's frowned upon in, um, in online racing. Um, when you drive off the track and go over the line, your tyre temperatures drop, drop quite quickly. And it's been being used in qualifying in certain racing uh, by particular teams. And the weather's get, not getting any better, but there is a dry line. There's a slick line on the track. And I think Gilles Gounon, bravely there, is trying to take, trying to keep all the tyres on the wet bits. And in doing so, he was putting his right tyres uh, over the edge of the line. If that's the case, Mike, you know, if, if he was um, just changing the radio and steering with his knees, I'd take it back. But I, I, Jules is a very, very clever lad. And he does a bit of uh, online racing as well. So maybe he said, hey, I saw it in an online race. Oh, I thought I'd give it a chance. <laughs> so at the top of the moment, Hawksworth for Vasa Sullivan, best of the... GTs and best of the GTT standards is Heart of Racing, Aston Martin, then the two Huracans. Uh, Mirko Bortolotti still has not beaten Dorian Pan's time. He's got within a tenth of a second, mm -hmm. but uh, great laps there. And uh, Jules Goudron is in the sixth position. He's coming into the pits, is he? Is he coming into the pits? Yes, so. 79 has come into the pits. Okay. And uh, Ian James there, one of the bronze category drivers, yes. of course, is Ian, and he's, there he is second. The next fastest bronze is, well, the car is Catherine Legg. There's a bronze driver in that car, but she's not a bronze-rated driver. No. The next highest bronze-rated driver would be Brendan Ereeb, who's 23rd. And two seconds away. Yeah. Ian's fairly experienced, in fairness. Um, and he's, he's loving life at the moment. He spent a lot of time in Europe uh, this summer uh, doing various driving. Heart of Racing have expanded exponentially. They took on the uh, AM, uh, AMR Northeast uh, Racing entry in the FIA WEC. And they've also now uh, been persuaded Aston Martin to let them develop the Valkyrie into a GTP and Le Mans hypercar. Graham Newell, who has one of the straight cars, has uh, decided that it is time for Aston Martin to go back to the top class of racing and they've made their resources available. So 2025 at Daytona, that car will make its debut. A lot of work to do on that 1,000 horsepower plus uh, ultra streetcar and in fact it will be based on the non-hybrid track version of the car, the Valkyrie AMR. Check the flag is out. Right. Who's Dorian Pan has pitted. She will be no better than second in GTD, but I think she'd take that right now. Aaron Taylor's improves right at the end and goes up to third position in GTD. Bill Oberlin in fourth for Turner Motorsport in the 97 car. The last car around will be the number 66 to take the chequered flag. The Gradient Racing NSX, if it does come round, they'll be looking at their deltas. Ian James is still out there. They'll use the tyres if there's anything left oh. in them at all. And to the top, Ian James overall. I was just about to say Ian James is out there using his tyres and he's used them to perfection, Jeremy Shaw. He's gone quickest of everyone. Yeah, he has. I thought Jack Horses was on a really good lap on that lap. Oh. He lost some time in the middle sector uh, and didn't improve. He turned, uh, he, he was actually much slower. On that, oh, he came in the pits. He uh, yeah. abandoned that lap. He came in the pits but, a lap early. But Mirko Bortolotti did not yeah. and has pipped Dorian Pan to be the best Lamborghini. So Iron Lynx and Iron Dames, same team as you might imagine, uh, are second and, th uh, sorry, third and fourth overall, second in each of their respective classes, Pro uh, and GTD. 
absolutely outstanding. I think we might say that they've got the setup of that Lamborghini Huracan fairly well sorted there, Jeremy, from Iron, Iron Lynx and Iron Dames. Yeah, very, very uh, good effort there by both of those two. And But what, it, what about Ian James there? I mean, goodness gracious, that, that is really impressive. 48 years of age is, is Ian now. Uh, it's his, his 52nd start, it'll be tomorrow in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. And his first ever pole position. Got five wins to his credit and 15 podium finishes. This will be his first pole position, though. And uh, just a uh, wow, what a day, what a few weeks it's been for him with that announcement of the uh, Valkyrie hypercar program. And now coming back, you know, he manages this, this whole harder racing team uh, and he drives in the long distance races as well and boy does he drive, that was a tremendous mm. effort by Ian James As I said he spent a lot of time in Europe uh, this summer, I think uh, having never raced at Spa before he did, I think he did three races on the bounce <laughs> at Spa um, WEC uh, there was a, a Creventic race and uh, and he did, I think he did Barcelona as well. Yeah, Joe Bradley just sitting behind us in the Global Broadcast Centre. That's cracking stuff uh, from Ian James. Jack Hawksworth takes the GTD Pro Pole. He'll not be happy about being half a tenth slower than the old bloke, will he? I mean, he's going to get some stick when he gets back to Vassar Sullivan. <laughs> Wait, he sees the times. <laughs> also says to me that the Aston Martin is a real contender here this weekend. Um, Alex Riberas in the pro car, though, all the way down in 15th position and nearly two seconds away, Jeremy, for Hart of Racing. So not sure what, what, what went on with the pro car for yeah. Alex Riberas. Isn't that strange? Yeah, you wouldn't have expected uh, him to be that far back. And uh, Antonio, Antonio Fuoco, uh, you know, another really, really talented young driver in the Ferrari. He's a long, long way back as well in 14th. Of course, that car's been uh, repaired, completely, totally rebuilt after the crash that he had the other day. But, yeah, there's a few surprises in the order. Good job there by Brendan Arid, by the way. Got up to 13th position ahead of Fuoco and Riberas and Seb Prio. Uh, really good job by that McLaren driver, Brendan Arid, then. He's 7th in GTD and... Well, third, of, second of the bronze-rated drivers. So, what a session that was! Yeah. Plenty to keep us going. Now, I'm going to ask Bill you the same. got up at the end, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Wow. he came up to fourth in yeah. GTD, sixth overall. Phil Ellis for Winwood Racing uh, in eighth position. Uh, Shea Adam, tell me, tell the world what you've just told me, and. I, uh, Jeremy will then be even more impressed. <laughs> well, I'm going to try and dive in here with Jack Hawksworth before he drifts away. But one of the crew members from the number 14 Faster Sullivan Lexus, Nate, just walked over and told me that Aston Martin was on slick tires. So that's going to make everybody wow. breathe a little bit better. But hey, Jack, you're the only guy who's ever been on pole for Petit Le Mans in the GTD Pro class. That's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, it's not a bad little record, is it? So uh, yeah, obviously, really fun session. Was it wet? Was it slick? Uh, I think in our, awesome. Cheers, bud. Maybe in our position, we had to go with the wets just to be safer. And uh, uh, it was a hard session to manage because it was you could push for a lap and then the, obviously the wets would get too hot. You'd have to back off for a few laps. Track was getting better, but the wets were getting worse. So it was a balancing act. But amazing, uh, amazing day, and uh, we put ourselves in a good position for tomorrow. Obviously, we know what that means, and uh, now we're focused on yeah, trying to win this race tomorrow. But big thanks to everyone of Vast Sullivan, Lexus. Let's have it tomorrow. Front row start means that you got a clear view of that start line. I can imagine you're going to be staring at it pretty hard because as soon as you pass that, you're a champion. How how restless are you going to be tonight? Uh, I think I'm going to sleep pretty good, to be honest. So uh, yeah, no, I feel good about it. I feel we've got a great team. It's say it's been a hell of a journey the last seven years, and uh, it's a lot of hard work from a lot of people. Uh, Alexis, TRD, Vas Sullivan to get us to this point. We know we got a big day ahead of us tomorrow, and uh, you know whatever happens, it's it's. Touch World going to be a good one, and uh, yeah, after that, you know, we want to defend this race win. It's Petit Le Mans, right? Like you want to win this thing, so I'm, I'm going for the win, and all these boys are as well. Congrats on today, Jack. No doubting where he was from. Uh, Ian James, uh, overall pole position, and can you confirm, Nick Damon, that he was on slick tyres from the start of that session because you're not allowed to change? Ian, um, 
we wonder what the secret of your success was, apart from obviously naked talent, um, <laughs> you've got no tread on your tyres. Yeah, definitely not the talent level, but uh, no, I decided to roll the dice a little bit there, went for slicks. Uh, it was pretty tricky keeping it on the track for the first few laps, but it gradually got better and better and uh, just managed to nab it there at the end. Was it just an like inspired, inspired guess, or did the team go, oh, it's our only chance? Uh, well, they said, it's up to you, Ian, what do you want to do? I'm like, uh, let's go for it. <laughs> I mean, the interesting thing is, obviously, yeah, you've got a kind of a free choice. How do you find qualifying normally with the Aston? Is it, is it, is it a good a qualifying car? Yeah, I mean, the Aston, it's, you know, it's developed into a good car all round, you know, so um, it definitely was good in that session, and uh, definitely the pro guys in, in, in our team uh, do very well in it, so it was nice uh, for me to get a chance now and again. Just kind of wondering whether putting this car on pole is the first part in a long-term audition process to actually get yourself into the Valkyrie. Uh, well, I promise you I'll drive it. I promise you I won't drive it in competition. How about that? <laughs> Ian, great stuff. Thank you. Great stuff. So maybe that uh, explains, Jeremy, the difference in yeah. pace between Alex Riberas uh, and uh, Ian James. And I'm hearing that Merkel Bortolotti is going to get a penalty. He exited his pit box before qualifying started. So that's the second place car in GTD Pro. I'll just wait for confirmation of what the potential penalty will be. That would uh, mean loss of times, I reckon, from that session. It's one of Shea's pet peeves. Uh, so we'll wait to confirm that to see if uh, that comes through on the screen. So uh, leaving the pit box too early for the start before the start of qualifying for Merkel Bortolotti and the Iron Lynx Lamborghini. Sheer Adam, that is one of your massive pet peeves, isn't it? <sighs> but that's what we get when people come into the championship, don't run a full season, and perhaps don't brush up on the rule book before they go out for the weekend. How often do we see that, John, True. with these one-off teams? Uh, and that, that will be loss of all times. All times. Yeah, understood. Still on the screen at the moment. Uh, and with whatever else has gone on this afternoon, and if you weren't with us, I won't spoil it for you, but make sure you listen to the archive of the uh, IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge. And don't turn off at the chequered flag. Um, go and make yourself a cup of tea and then sit down and come back um, because there's a bit goes on after that. Uh, quite a bit. And it's not finished, is all I'm going to say. Uh, well done to Aston Martin. Uh, Vantage Heart of Racing team, Ian James rolled the dice. Uh, see, the old blokes. I said I thought I would, I would have done that. Just now, now people up and down the pit lane for the next session, the prototype session, Jeremy, they'll have said, well, Ian James has just gone out there. They'll be, the team managers will be saying to their driver, Jeremy, hang on, Ian James, who's 58, he's just 55, he's just gone out there and put pole position on on slicks. You can go out on slicks. Go out there. Set yeah. a time. No, I think it will be slicks now. And if there's no more precipitation, I think it's, you know, there's a pretty much dry line most around the racetrack. And you know, Ian's, of course, ma massively experienced, which, help, which helps him. But no, it's got to be slicks, I think, from now. Mm. I think once you've seen somebody do it, it's a, yeah. it's a bit like in MotoGP. Um, when one rider comes in and puts a set of slicks on and you think, oh, that, that's ridiculous. There's no chance that you're going to stay on him. Oh, hang on a second. He's just set pole position. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, 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 the, 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 the problem is at that point, and, and Ian made that point actually when he was talking to Nick, as we go green for... Thunder. The th it's like thunder, that Nissan engine, isn't it, the V8? Bronze drivers for P2. Uh, uh, and... But and bond driver or silver under 30 for P3. The, the, your margin for error uh, on slicks on a damp track, even on a drying track, just gets slimmer and slimmer and slimmer because you put half a tyre offline. Or at, on a kerb. Or on a kerb or on a white line or on, or on that tiny bit of track that you didn't realise was slightly wetter than the other because the wind blows in a certain direction and that bit doesn't dry up. And, and that could end your session. Um, the rest is not until tomorrow. But even so, you want to give the lads and lasses in your pit a decent uh, early night tonight because it's a long day tomorrow with warm up, warm up fairly early on in the morning. Shea Adam down in the pit lane and Nick Damon alongside her. Well, not actually, they've, they've split to either end of the pit lane. Another 15-minute session here, Shea, and again, it's run what you brung. 
Exactly. And for the LMP2 contenders, well, championship points are on the line. Well, for everybody, championship points are on the line. But for P2, the battle at the top is so tight. There's only 20 points that separate Stephen Thomas and Ben Keating and their respective co-drivers, Mikkel Jensen and Paul Loup Chaton. And 100 points behind the lead is George Kurtz and Ben Hanley. Well, Keating has three poles this year. Kurtz has two. Can anyone else come to play? Uh, and Shea, just to confirm, by the way, uh, it was actually Marco Bartolotti we think might have been getting out of the car before qualifying ended, rather than them leaving the box beforehand. Um, uh, uh, but that has had the same issue. I'm looking at the timing screen now, and that car has been removed from its second place. So the Iron Links, uh, Iron Links 63 car, it's a it's a rule, as Shea said that sometimes is a little bit difficult for, for teams to remember when they're not doing this week in, week out. But once you start with the green flag from qualifying, you are not allowed to touch the car. You can bring it back in the pit lane, but you can't touch it. You can't even change the tire pressures. Um, you can't, if you want to, even if it's a hot day, and you want to open the door for the driver and help with that. You've got to ask an IMSA official, first of all. And the issue there was Merkel bought a lot he left the car before the end of the session and sure we've got another car in the pit lane here uh, and this looks like a problem that's performance tech in the pit lane the number 38 going out and now coming back in and there are people working on the right hand side of the car that's going to be another dq so that's uh, finish start at the back uh, of the field and that is uh, that means they're going to lose any lap times, even if they do get back out. Um, Truman, and Truman Aiken Awards, Jeremy. These are for non-pro drivers, and the prize at stake is a favourable nod from the selection committee for Le Mans 2024. So much prize, much sought after. Yeah, the, the Bob Aiken Award is for GTD. Uh, Brendan Ereeb leads that uh, pretty handily over Alan Brynjolfsson in second position. Uh, and then Sheena Monk in third. He's got a 160 point edge. So he hasn't clinched it, but he's in a good position. That's the Inception McLaren driver. But the, uh, the uh, Jim Truman Award is, um, well, it, it couldn't be any closer. We've got Stephen Thomas, George Kurtz, and Ben Keating all tied, if you can believe it, on 1,770 points. The tie break there is that there's two wins for Stephen Thomas to the one apiece of George Kurtz and Ben Keating. And Kurtz over Keating has the tie break for second position at the moment with two third positions uh, to the one third of uh, Ken Keating. They've all three of them got one second place on this season. So it's going to basically come down to pretty much whoever finishes ahead of the other one in the race on Saturday. That's for that Jim Truman Award. So Stephen Thomas to the top. And a time of 1.17. Now, this could be like, the, the, these sessions, I love them. This could be last last driver across the line is pole yeah. position in both the classes. Yeah, quite likely, John. I think uh, yeah, we, we often see these uh, these cars go faster and faster throughout the entire session. And particularly now with these drying conditions as well, the track is only, I think, going to get better as the 15 minutes uh, goes on through. We're already uh, a third of the way through it. Just. Uh, coming up for 10 minutes to go now in this qualifying session. There's a good lap from Pro Francois Perodo in the number 88 uh, car uh, in uh, for the AF Corsa team. He's gone fastest, 116.810 for Perodo to the 117.7 of Ben Keating, the 18.1 of George Kurtz and the 18.3 of Stephen Thomas. But uh, that will change. Stephen Thomas on a particularly good lap here purple in the middle sector but Perona has gone quickest by a tenth in the first sector that's a short one it's just from start finish line through turn one up to the top of the hill you can see Ben Thomas now to complete his fourth lap it goes from fourth to first with a 116.338 John Falb into second position that's his teammate at TDS racing kind of a 35 uh, a, a turns a 16.7 Francois Perodo back to the top, 16.285 in car number 88. It's that uh, black and, and chrome coloured car, stunning livery when you see it close up. It's 
doesn't quite work quite so well on TV, I don't think, but it's, right. it's tremendous close up. 38 car penalty, driver exiting a car during qualify, all laps invalidated, so that was what Shea was seeing uh, early. 38. Yeah. That's the performance tech car. It's Brian Athenas in uh, uh, P3. They, ha they had problems, Shea reported them working uh, in the cockpit of that car. Should just mention as well the Kelly Moss uh, Porsche. Uh, the David Brulé car, Kelly Moss with Riley, 911 GT3R. Uh, they didn't go out um, at all. Um, if they'd qualified someone else, they wouldn't have got the extra set of tyres uh, for the race. Um, and they didn't want to risk David and the car in the tricky conditions. So they figure, I suppose it's a 10 hour race. We start where we start and we've still got the extra set of tyres. And do they not get qualifying points then? as well uh, yeah so that sorry they didn't get the uh, extra set of, of ties they would have right. had. Um, but I, I wonder whether they get championship points yeah I'm not sure about that to be honest remember that the allocation for actually for GTD the allocation is for the event not for qualifying in the, the race points talk about championship points all right uh, ben Keating now fastest, so 115.414 for Ben Keating in car number 52 for PR1 Matheson Motorsports. John Falb into second position in the number 35 TDS car, 115.5. Then his teammate Stephen Thomas, 115.6. He's just gone purple again in sector two. Uh, and in fourth position, George Kurtz, a 115.7. So really, really close between those top four. And Francois Perodo is only another couple of tenths back in the fifth position for AF Corsa. Right. Let's, uh, let me just reset what I said about the uh, Kelly Moss car. The GTD, along with GTD Pro and LMP3, get 17 sets of Michelin tyres for the whole event. They didn't want to use a set of tyres there. They will keep them for the race. And they didn't feel that it was worth putting David out in these conditions and risking him in the car because uh, the weather conditions tomorrow are set to be somewhat different. And they've got 10 hours. They can work their way from the back of the race. 17 sets is a penny in any case. I don't think that's really concerned. So, the, the, la the latter was the, was the primary yes. reason. Yeah, and, and you know what? Insensible. Don't, don't put any more pressure on, on a driver than you need to Absolutely do. Absolutely right. You've got bags of time tomorrow to work wow. your way through. I tell you what, it couldn't get much closer here in LMP2. Stephen Thomas to the top now in car number 11, 115.034. George Kurtz in the crowd strike by APR, 116.050. Ben Keating also improves last time out at 115.088. So uh, less than half of a hundredth of a second <laughs> separates those top three. Is that Ben Keating, the well-known Mazda MX-5 driver? that uh, he's out there at the moment. He has an uh, absolute ball out there. Stephen Thomas improves to a 14.669. So he's the first into the 14s, for, quickly followed by Ben Keating, who in fact goes quickest with a 14.565. This has been a phenomenal qualifying battle all season between yeah. Ben Keating for PR1 in the 52 wins car, the TDS number 11, and George Kurtz, the crowd strike by Algar Pro Racing car, the 04. They, they, if they had just been standing in front of each other, it's like those battling robots punching each other on the chin. That is, that's what qualifying's been like all year. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, and George Kurtz, who's in fourth position at the moment, he's got, just gone purple in sector one. Uh, these guys are hanging it out right now. Really, a good lap time, Sue, 14.5. Uh, 14 I mean, the quickest LMP2 car uh, so far, or the quickest in the, in the most recent session, was Mikkel Jensen at a, a 12.8. Uh, and, you know, 13s and 14s are pretty good laps. And, you know, it's still pretty, it's still damp out there. Certainly, you know, slick tyres is the way to go for sure. But it's not that easy. Stephen Thomas does does improve on that last lap amazingly, but stays second. Ben Keating goes. Oh, sorry, that's his, yeah. I know that's a 450. That's quicker yeah. again. Yeah. It's every lap. Yeah. We said this would happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still four minutes to go. So another three laps probably mm. for these contenders. There's uh, 
Uh, George Kurtz, who also improves at 14.9. Right, let's see where they all are on the track. Where's Ben Keating at the moment in the 50... I think Stephen's ahead of them. I think he's the... Uh, the most sort of farther around the race, I can kind of 11, is he? Uh, yes, he is. And he's just 52. coming out of seven, there, and he's got two cars between himself and Ben Keating, yeah. and then George Kurtz in the 0-4. There's George. He must be tight up behind somebody, because I can't see his number on the track. Yet. He was oh, there he is, he's just coming out of seven. Yeah. yeah. So, it is Stephen coming down to turn 10 now. And LMP3, Glenn Van Berlo has just... Uh, didn't, didn't improve that time around, actually, but he is the fastest man for Andretti Orders. What he can't have a 36, a 1 minute 60. Whoops! 1 minute 60, you put 6, 7, 4. That is Van Berlo, isn't it? That is Kev, uh, uh, Van Berlo, yeah, yeah, in the 36. Black and... Uh, black and green and white car. And that is a little drop for Glenn, under 30 driver, yeah, he's Andretti got, Autosport. Yeah, he's got a couple of tenths of a second over fellow under 30 driver Rasmus Lind, who's been driving in the Indy Lights, or in the next, I should say, this season. Next. Next. Yes. And Joey Garg, who this morning clinched the VP uh, Racing Challenge Series title for Junior 3 Racing. He's third fastest, and he's only... A couple oh. of tents behind Rasmus Lind. Ooh, yikes. Oh, that's a replay. Okay. That, uh, I mean, that, that was a very odd one from Glenn from, Glenn from Berlo because I thought he got round the corner. I think he did as well. Yeah. Uh, we've all done that in the uh, Sims. Um, just couldn't get the front end to turn. He's not, he's not come back in. He's dropped a little bit of body work. I think one of the rear lights popped out. No, no, it's still there. So he goes across the line, getting a bit of porpoising going down the front straight. Here comes Stephen Thomas. What can he do? Good luck going here. Crosses the line now. Yeah, he does improve. He was three tenths behind Ben Keating. He's now just a tenth behind him. There's Ben Keating. 14360 for Thomas. Ben Keating slowed that time, yeah, so a couple did. of seconds off. George Kirks did not. The top three, now just three tenths between them as George Kurtz puts his fastest lap in. Francois Perodo, another second or so away. And just under that, half a second away, he's just improved. Fifth position for the AF Corsa driver. John Falb for TDS is in fourth. Top five, separated by uh, 0.917 of a second. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Ari Baylog, he's doing a nice job there in sixth position in on his LMP2 debut in car number eight for Tower Motorsport, sporting different livery this weekend. This car looks great, actually. Mm. And Ari's doing a nice job, but just 1.4 seconds off the quickest time for Ari. So good job by him. Another quicker lap by Rasmus Lind. Now just a tenth away from Glenn van Berlo for the LMP three pole position, Ligia Duquesne, Ligia Duquesne with Bijoy Garg and AWA's Ore Fadani Stephen in the top Thomas. four positions. Oh, Stephen! Wow. 13, 8, 7, 9 for Stephen Thomas in car number 11. And he's crossed the line, so he'll get another lap. Where is the 52 car? It's just gone through, so this will be the last lap for Ben Keating. He did a 14-5 last time around, but he'll be getting his tyres up to heat. So this is this is it for Ben Keating through the S's up to Ant, turn five. He's got John Falb in front of him, but I don't think John. Um, I don't think John's going to be an issue. Checkered flag is out. Bijoy Garg sees it first for Junior Three Racing. Yeah. Did improve, but not his position. Dwight M Merriman improves, but not his position. Dennis Anderson, high class racing in the red and white number 20, does improve. Moves up to sixth. And all of the top three got across the line to start another lap, Jeremy. There goes Rasmus Lind. Oh no, doesn't quite improve. So uh, he's going to have to be content with second position in that number 85 JDC Miller Motorsports car. Wins car coming through the Here comes Stephen Thomas. Corner. 
Stephen Thomas, does he reset the time? 13, 8, 7, 9, no, he lifted right off. Here comes Ben Keating, this is his chance for pole position. Comes across the line and takes it by 0.020 of a second. Ben Keating in the wind's car. Now, what about George Kurtz? Because Falb has gone ahead of Kurtz. Falb on the last lap there. Sneak through into third and he swaps sides on row two with George Kurtz who does not improve, he backed right off. Ben Keating, master of the last lap, one lap, slowed down two laps from the end, then put a quick, three laps from the end rather, put a quick one in to get himself back in the groove and nicks it by two one hundredths of a second. Ben Keating, his extraordinary 2023 continues as he puts it on pole position for the 26th Motul Patila Mop. And that is his 14th pole position, which takes him equal in the, the, the latest era of sports car racing since 2014 with Ricky Taylor uh, on 14 pole positions. He was uh, one ahead of Madison Snow who didn't add to his tally today, but Ben Keaton then goes to, uh, moves ahead of, he'd already moved ahead of uh, James French and Jordan Taylor, now equal with Ricky. What a great session that was. Brilliant lap at the end by Ben Keaton. But look, just 0 0.020 separating number 52 and number 11. We've seen that so many times, mm. haven't we, John? It's great stuff. And the top four were separated by just under seven tenths of a second. Uh, the top two by 0 0.020. And John Falb improving on the last lap. Yeah. Just, as I said, the swap sides on, on row two. That's a good run as well, though. So TDS second and third. PR1 Matheson uh, on the pole position. Yeah, and uh, John Falb was following in the wheel tracks, I think, of Stephen Thomas. He wasn't too far behind him on the racetrack and uh, learned a lot there. A really good lap by John to put that car in third. The um, silhouette on the wall. That's incredible. That was from... It was from the TDS car, wasn't it? That went off? Yes, it was. Yeah, you've Guido van der Garde, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, the silhouette on the, the banding That's for incredible. the tyres. That somebody at the end of this race, that needs to be lacquered and cut out and put somewhere. It's the most incredible thing. If you're watching the pictures, you'll have seen that. If not, basically, Guido van der Garde lost the back end of the car and went in pretty much broadside and has left a perfect silhouette of the side of the racing car. It's as if someone has painted it on there or put it on in charcoal or whatever. It is quite extraordinary. Um, the mark of a great driver, might one say. Um, <laughs> I'm getting them all in now, Jeremy. I tell you, it's the end of the season. I'll get my coat. Uh, so we have, uh, and pole position, by the way, for LMP3 um, was Clint von Berlo for Andretti Autosport in their last outing with the Ligier in the WeatherTech Championship. We lose the LMP3s. Um, look, a lot of people are somewhat less than charitable about the LMP3s. They've been a good servant in WeatherTech. They will continue uh, to be racing with IMSA in the VP Racing Series, where they are the top class with uh, the GSX cars, the uh, GT4 cars, as the other category, and that will continue into next year. Right, now, everything we've told you about not touching the car goes out the window for the next session. We'll uh, reset that in a moment, as uh, Nick Damon has got Glenn Van Berlo. Glenn Van Berlo, uh, second pole, and then your fourth race. Yeah, not too bad. It was uh, quite tricky out there, but really happy that we got the pole. Um, just a bit of the side of your car. I mean, you have a, a number of tufts of grass just sticking out the side of the side pod. Um, any uh, any reason for that? Yeah, well, it was really tricky out there. There were still some wet spots on the track, so especially the first laps, you really needed to get the heat into the tire. And then uh, on the end of T3, I went a little bit through, through the wet, and I got a big snap on entry, so I went through the grass. That's the reason for uh, <laughs> the grass on the car. Looking forward to the race. Where do you feel this car is in comparison to some of the rivals over race pace? I think we're looking quite good in comparison um, uh, to the others. Yesterday we had a really strong run um, on race with, with race fuel. Um, tire deck seems to be really good with the current setup that we have. So obviously it's a long race with 54 cars on track, a lot can happen. So it's challenging, we, we try to stay out of trouble, no penalties. And then um, I think we can fight for a good position tomorrow. Great stuff, thanks Glenn. Thank you. Claire van Berlo then, pole position for... Uh, Andretti Autosport, Ben Keating, 
standing by to be spoken to. Um, as I said, what a 2024 for him. Sheer Adam is down at that part of the uh, pit lane. It's just been extraordinary, this story that Ben just keeps resetting record after record, Sheer, and he, he gets he's getting quicker, I reckon. For sure he is, and I, I joked earlier in our Mazda coverage, Ben Keating is the most accomplished guy who's ever raced in the Itamitsu Mazda MX-5 Championship with all your big race wins, but now you've got 13 solo poles, 14 total in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. You had to work really hard for that one. Stephen Thomas, though, as he was driving down the pit lane, he held a thumbs up. He appreciates the effort that went into that one. Do you? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, he slowed way down on the back straight, and I slowed down next to him, gave him a thumbs up as well. Uh, we've been... Uh, you know, uh, great competitors for a long time. Here he is, uh, uh, and uh, golly, it was so close, man. Love you, man. Stephen came over, gives him a big hug, says, "Love you, man." Yeah, uh, you made me work for that one. Uh, well, it's a, it's an honor to chase, man. He's been the lead of the gentleman drivers since I started, and uh, he's been great to me. And great job, yeah, man. You improved uh, eight tenths in on a damp track. Uh, well, you made uh, me do it. Ah, man. Right. Uh, you, man. Hey, thank you. you. Thank you. Got to appreciate both of these guys. And the championship battle, it's coming down to you guys and George Kurtz as well. Yeah. Could you ask for a better situation than fighting against two of these no, great humans? Uh, no, I mean, uh, you, know, you got three things going on this weekend. Of course, you have the overall championship, which it's all really, really close. But you have the Truman Award, which is uh, gets whoever wins it, the automatic entry to Le Mans. All three of us are tied, dead even tie with 1,770 points. So whoever finishes ahead among the three of us uh, gets an automatic entry to Le Mans, which is very uh, valuable and important. And then you have the North American Endurance Cup, the Michelin North American Endurance Cup. Uh, and, uh, you know, they've got a, the, Steven's got a two point lead. Uh, so anything can happen in this race, and it uh, usually does. Well, good luck to all three of you, Lamont winners. Congrats on your poll. Hey, thank you very much, Shay. Uh, that was brilliant, wasn't it? Absolutely brilliant. That's that's respect. Yeah. Uh, you don't always get that in motor racing. We're fortunate in sports car racing yeah. that the professionals respect each other. The non-pros do as well. What was somebody somebody at, at, at uh, Mercedes-Benz called them? The late starting professionals is what they call them. And frankly, the kind of performances we're seeing from those three drivers in particular, th that's not a, a, not a, a, an unreasonable way to describe those three gentlemen. Uh, that's right. I mean, uh, but, yeah, but Ben, he, I mean, he's acknowledged as one of the very, very best bronze racing drivers in the world. In the world. Uh, but he's been racing a long time. Stephen Thomas has not. Mm. He, he only made his you know, first dabble into the sport maybe five years ago. So he's come on remarkably quickly. And that, that was a tremendous lap. I mean, in yeah, pretty tricky conditions. Well, you heard what Ben it. said. Exactly. I, I love the way. By the, yeah. I, I love the way. By the way, Ben knows what everyone else is doing yeah. as well. So, Stephen, you've improved eight tenths of a second on a damp track. So he knew exactly what Stephen had been doing earlier in the week. That's impressive to have that kind of um, additional memory yeah. capacity, a mental capacity, to know what you. Your competitors are doing. Uh, Shea Adam, it's the big show next. GTP for the uh, head, uh, before they head out. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the drivers. And Joe Bradley has gone down for the big show. Yes, I have. Tension is mounting, of course. This is the big class. The big boys are out next, aren't they? And I've got to say, these GTP cars just look otherworldly, don't they? We're about to see them in action. Uh, this is perhaps the most competitive session we're about to go ahead, or the most important competitive session of the weekend, other than tomorrow's race. Uh, it's all about bragging rights, isn't it? It's all about and, and starting on that pole position. Yeah, and uh, track position, Joe, as well. These are big cars. They're just over five metres long and a little over two metres wide. The rain looks like it's picking up again. Now, good news for these cars because they can go out on slicks now. If they have to change, they can. You can come back in the pits and uh, make those tyre changes in this session, which is extended to 20 minutes for the GTPs only. We've not seen these cars in 
competitive action here before. I was fortunate enough to be here a year ago to see the first test of most of the manufacturers that are here uh, this weekend. Porsche weren't here, they went uh, somewhere else to do the test. I cannot believe that it is only one year, a 12 month, since these cars were on this track doing their first public test. That's raining quite hard and um, it looks like, and I'm hearing that the Wayne Taylor Racing Acura number 10, yeah, there's the confirmation that they are changing tyres in the pit lane. Joe Bradley, how heavy is that rain in the pit lane and what tyres is the number 10 on? It's a very, very light drizzle. The number 10 is on slick. That's a slick tyre on that car. Right, so they changed the slick tyres. So it looked like there was some debate going on about whether they should start on the Michelin wets or the slicks. We know how difficult these car, these tyres are and these cars to warm up their tyres, Jeremy. Yeah. These first couple of laps with the rain falling are going to be even more tricky than usual. Sure, boy. Tip I mean, we, toe. Saw, we saw cars slithering around yesterday, didn't they? Even, even a couple of laps of them after they'd gone out of the pits. Now... It's going to take uh, quite a while to warm, warm these tyres up, and I'm sure you know, some of the teams they wanted they wanted to scrub in some tyres for the, for tomorrow's race, mm. perhaps during this session. I'm not sure they. I have to do that. Oh, right. I... So straight back into the pit lane for the number 60 Acura and for the 01 Cadillac. As well, maybe that is just scrubbing in some tyres. 17 minutes still to go oh, big yeah. slide for bmw number 25 should give you some drivers actually uh, we getting very excited about the cars that are out there that's a fair bit of precipitation is he heading Connor up De Filippi in the number 25 augusto farfus in the number 24 bmw it's mike rockenfeller in the jdc miller machine uh, that's the Audi, yeah, and this is tyre scrubbing going on. Just yeah. one lap, uh, if they can. No movement for the number six Porsche Penske Motorsport car. The number seven has Philippe Nazar in it. Uh, Louis Delatraz took out the cutting of Manolta Acura uh, of uh, Wayne Taylor Racing, Augusto Farfus. Uh, we've mentioned Pico Durrani uh, for Wheel and Engineering, 31 Cadillac, Neil Janney for Protons Porsche, the number 59 WeatherTech car. Uh, Tom Blomqvist it is who's behind the wheel of the number 60 Acura Durrani straight back into the pit lane so we're not this is this is not setting a time mode this is scrubbing tyres mode at the moment now we might see some times as Durrani goes through turn one with the number seven Porsche sitting in behind him Felipe Naza goes to the top of the times with a 91 second lap. That looks horrible out there. That looks really, really difficult out there. They haven't even got past the GTD times yet and they're scrubbing in tyres. Th there's going to be a time when they're going to just sacrifice a set of wets here, Jeremy, aren't they? Or put the car in the wall. Yeah. Poor, I mean, this is man. nasty now. This is really dodgy. Really dodgy. What a shame. God, I was so much looking forward to this qualifying session because we saw a, a stunning end of the uh, practice session yesterday afternoon yeah, yeah. yesterday afternoon when uh, you know times were tumbling down and just getting faster and faster and faster it was really fun to watch and i thought that body worked really well for this afternoon's qualifying but i think we're going to be robbed of that uh first car on to wet weather tires is the number 24 bmw of augusto farfus now augusto had a long chat with him at spa a couple of weeks ago when he was there helping with the WRT test, immensely experienced driver, uh, European Formula 3000, knocking on the door of Formula One. And he's decided with his experience, he reckons Wets is the way to go. Touring car driver extraordinaire as well, of course. Let's not forget, people Durrani goes fastest, but still isn't really <laughs> a time that we would expect. Now, if it really rains... Still two seconds behind the slowest the GTD car. Yeah. <laughs> However, whatever happens in this session, Jeremy, the GTPs will start yeah. ahead of the P2s, which will start ahead of the P3s, which will start ahead of the GTs. 
That's more wet tyres going on the Cadillac with the gold front. Zero one car. In comes the WeatherTech car. So now we're going to see some, with 14 and a bit minutes to go, Jeremy, now we're going to see some people going for times. Yeah, wow, I mean, this, is, uh, this is really weird, isn't it? To see these guys struggling so much. But uh, there was, a, you could see from the, the windshield wipers were working pretty hard. All those cars moving a fair bit of water out of the way. Here we go, get on board with the wheel and engineering cadillac. That's Pipo Durrani. Did you hear his down changes there? It was very, very precise. It wasn't bang, bang, bang. It was bang, wait, bang, wait, bang, wait. Just letting the car catch up. Wheel speed going up the hill and side by side with the Wayne Taylor Acura actually raced him into the pit lane there. If you didn't hear our uh, programme last night, our radio programme last night from nighttime practice, it is available to download from imsaradio.com. You can listen on demand there as well. Uh, we had some great stories. Wayne Taylor was on top form last night, Bill Oberlin as well. Uh, do yourself a favour, click on it and listen on demand or download it and listen to it later. Uh, the session is for familiarisation and it doesn't count for anything. So we took the opportunity just to talk to as many people as possible. Some great memories and also some good information from Wayne Taylor about he and the Acura programme going forward and particularly their Le Mans aspirations. Simsonradio.com for all of the downloads, audio downloads this weekend. Uh, Joe Bradley seeing a lot of tyre changes down there in the pit lane, including on a car that hasn't even been out yet. Yeah, I think treaded tyres are the order of the day. It's been decided. Just had the wheel and car in and the number 10 Conagan and Alta Acura in as well. I think everybody who has been out there on slicks has now come in. I think we've probably got the whole field. The number six Porsche uh, hadn't gone out, hadn't, didn't even do a lap. It waited for everybody else to uh, go on a recce mission for it <laughs> and then went on to wets, took the slicks off, went on to wets. It's gone out for its first laps. And was it Tandy behind the wheel of that? Couldn't see, couldn't right. see, couldn't Let see. Me, uh, I'll check that one for you. Uh, it was indeed Dick Tandy who went out in the Porsche Penske Motorsport. Nick Tandy, um, part of the GT team for Porsche that won here overall in very wet conditions. Let's not forget. Patrick Peel here. So, with still just over half the session to go, Jeremy, a couple of sets of dry tyres have been... at least had the release agent taken off the top, just one lap or some of, some of the guys have done two laps on them but now we're starting to see things moving on it was slower that lap for Augusto Farfus yeah he was the first one to put the tyres on uh, the wet tyres on Jeremy as well the 24 BMW going through turn one now climbs the hill apex of turn two pointed at the sky I promise you the track will still be there Sebastian Bourdais up to second now in GTP with a 121.1 the problem is here, if it's getting progressively worse, we might not see any improvement. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're just uh, both of these two got faster through the first sector than, than they did on their previous lap. So building a little bit of heat into the tires. Into the, into the I can see the headlights actually just glistening on the surface, particularly through the S's and through turn six and seven. So. Sebastian Bordier not even trying to get to the apex of turn seven there, doing the high line, the old, what used to be called the karting wet line, stay off where the rubber is down because that will be greasy and horrid. Try and find a bit of grip on the outside. The track was uh, dusted down, brushed off after the Michelin Pilot Challenge race. So there, there shouldn't be too many marbles out there and maybe just a little more grip to be found. Bordet over the top of the hill and through to turn 12. Crosses the line and improves his time but Nick Tandy's gone ahead of him on his first flying lap. Tandy with a 20.0 just on a tenth and a third behind Augusto Farfus and Felipe Naza in the number seven Porsche Penske Motorsport machine. Matty Campbell's been quick in that all week. I think they've got a good setup on that number seven car. Again. Yeah, again, yes, well done, Jeremy. 118.8. So Felipe Nazar has thrown the gauntlet down a little bit and given 
everyone else something to chase. Eight tenths of a second to the good. Yep, and uh, Neil, uh, excuse me, Louis Delatras is uh, is up into second position in car number ten, and uh, Mike Rockefeller just moved up. Neil Jarney, I think. Yes. He just uh, improved his time. Tandy to the top. 118.8. So the two Porsches very closely matched. Six and seven. Except Tandy's done it on his first two flying laps. 118.856. 118.873. But now they're chasing Tom Blomqvist on his second flying lap. Check that third flying lap. 118.669. Top three. That's separated by just under two tenths of a second. It's weird, though, isn't it? I mean, look at the overall times, and they're behind three of the LP3 cars. It just shows you how slippery it is out there. Tandy hanging it out down through the S's and not afraid to let the car move around underneath him. Car bouncing over the undulations there as well, coming to turn five and rather backing it in there. Nick doesn't have what might be called the traditional karting, single-seater, etc., etc. We're into motorsport. And Tandy loves this place in the wet. He came from short oval background, including driving on um, uh, gravel in mini stocks. So he's used to the car uh, rolling around and moving around underneath him. Yep. Nick Tandy then uh, improves. 118.1. Back to the top. Nick, third position. Oh, third. Yep. As Philippe Nas has gone back to the top. Now Blomqvist back to the top. Yeah. Okay. Now they're getting some heat in these tyres. I think the, the conditions now, have, I think, have stabilised. Uh, and now they're just building more heat in tyres and finding, more, finding a little bit more, little bit more grip. The emphasis on the little. Uh, and going a bit quicker. But uh, they're still behind the top three LMP3 cars. Bunker said a 117.7 oh. to the 118.0 of NASA, 118.1 for Delatraz and Tandy. Blanc, we're starting to feel confident enough to use a bit more of the kerbs through the S's and the exit of turn five. He's coming up to turn six now, turns in, he's on the racing line. Let's see where he goes at turn seven. Does he go to the apex? He does. So there's a little more grip there. Now, here's a question. With the weather having stabilised, Tom's still got the windscreen wiper going, but I don't think he really needs it to clear the glass. Probably just what concentrating too hard to turn it off. Do you come in and put a set of slicks on for the last five minutes? <laughs> I mean, we saw how quickly it changed for Ian James. Yeah, I mean, it's not. I think the track's not that far away from slicks. 23 Celsius but track it's, temperature. It's risky. I mean, the problem is just get, building get the heat the, into the That tire. is the problem. If you're on tyre warmers, I would have said yes. Yeah. Bang a set of slicks on for the last five minutes. Yeah, it's certainly going to be to see if anybody takes the gamble. The gamble it will look more precipitation on the windscreen of that number 31 car. Pippa Durrani down in what, eighth position. Well, the other thing that you could do is bring someone in for a fresher set of rain tyres. Joe Bradley, I see movement on the wall down at Porsche Penske Motorsport. The number six of Nick Tandy. Is that a new set of wets or a new set of slicks? That looks like... Well, you know what? Things have not really stopped moving down here, to be honest. Um, I've got a board out for the 25 BMW just appeared. Now the Porsche boys have appeared with a new set of treaded tyres. Hang on a second, hang on a second. Yes, definitely. I thought, yeah, they've definitely got treads ready for the Porsche. Uh, the BMW team, uh, yeah, treaded tyres for the BMW 25. Doesn't come out your allocation. So, you know, burn up another set of Michelin wets. Here comes Pete Durrani into his pit as well. Thank you, Joe. Uh, we'll get back to Joe in a wee second. And that is a new set of Michelin slick, uh, new set of Michelin treaded tyres, rain tyres. Definitely treads on the 31. Yeah. With five minutes to go. Take them about a couple of minutes to get round on the installation lap. Just too risky, I think. There goes Bourdais. Does improve, uh, but not his position. 18-4 for Bourdais. Goes Delatrice, who was second, now first. 
Deltra has won 17 6 1 4 for the car number 10. That's the accurate, accurate 1 2 at the moment. Now we'll just switch positions. It's still a 1 2, but the other way around, number 10 car ahead of number 60, which is in the pits by around about a tenth of a second. Yeah, it's a new set of tyres, new set of rain tyres for the MSR car in their last race for now in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Mike Shank ported on Sports Car 365 recently. You're saying um, it's the end of the chapter. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it's the end of the chapter, not the end of the story. We know they're not going to be here next year. I heard uh, on the grapevine that they had been talking to another manufacturer, but that deal couldn't get done uh, in time and the manufacturer involved wanted to support other customers uh, before taking on new ones. Uh, however, I suspect there's been some chat between MSR and the Alpine. A couple more pit Good lane sir. callers here. Number 01 car is in, the number 24 BMW, and now number 10 uh, Acura coming in. It's going to be tight for them. Well, exactly. It's, uh, three and a, less than three and a half minutes to go. Um, yeah, it's really going to get, only give them one. I think it's only going to give them one, unless they're really quick, uh, out lap before they have to turn the, you know, the final flyer. Yeah. Delatraz with the most to lose at the moment as well as the provisional pole sitter for the. 26th running of this great race. Yeah, but he's just gone purple in the third sector. He's just gone purple in the third sector. Is that, no, that, he's in the pits, isn't he? That's why yeah. he shows up as purple. Yeah. So, uh, no, it's all right. But uh, Now, where's Nick Tandy is the question for me. Answer coming through turn five. In front of him, the 25 BMW of Conor de Filippi, who sits in sixth at the moment. Neil Janney uh, leaves the pit lane in the WeatherTech Brawler competition, Porsche 963. Both Tandy and Di Filippi have improved through sector one on this lap, as has Filippi Nasser, who's significantly quicker through sector one. Louis Delatraz leaving the pit lane with a spectacular burnout, according to Joe Bradley. So he had some heat in the rears uh, as he went uh, out of the pits. Wow. Pipo Durrani up into second position in Cadillac car number 31. Just, uh, well, there's a big improvement though for Conor Di Filippi in the BMW. 116.3 for Di Filippi to the 116. There's Tandy. Aha, uh -huh, he goes 16.2 for Tandy. He goes fast. 15, uh, sorry, 16.2, yes. Against the 16.3, so just a tenth of a second. So another lap to go at least at the end of this one, I would think, for Nick Tandy. Yep. Yeah, just coming over the crest of the hill now down the hill yeah he'll get two in uh, that's the seven car that's uh, right. that's nasa so he, he he'll possibly get two. he's got a nice little tour from the weather tech car has to go to the inside into turn one how much time did he lose there also there's something rattling around uh, in the air intake of the left hand side of that number seven penalty for working on the car during qualifying for the Proton 59. Now you're allowed to change tyres, but other work is not allowed. So they're going to lose all their time. So they'll start at the back of the GTP field. Tom Blomquist back to the top in the Acura car number 61. 15.8. Oh, so nearly four Half, tenths. Yeah, yeah, four tenths. Yeah. Now you're talking. These are the new wets beginning to pay dividends. Nick Tandy did a slowish lap that time around a 120. So this is going to be Tandy's last chance. He's yep. going up through the uphill to turn one now. Ahead of him, he's got a slow moving Pipo Durrani who is finished. He, in fact, the reason the Pipo slowed down is he went off track at turn three and has gone across the motorcycle chicane. He will not improve from his position currently uh, down in sixth and needs to keep his eyes on the mirrors for where Tandy is. Tandy just coming up to turn wow, six. Sebastian Bourdais. Oh, big move over on the outside from the number 10 of Louis Delatraz as he comes to the line. Did he get uh, impeded there? He goes way up 
at two, a 1.15.4. Sebastian Bordier had done a 15.6. But he's going to get another lap, it's Bordier. No, I don't, oh, did he? No, he didn't take the checkered flag. No, Farfus but Delatraz did. did. Yeah, yeah Delatraz did, you're right. Yeah, and so did Farfus. Where's Nick Tandy? Nick Tandy coming down to the bottom of the hill now. Delatraz then with the best time, the, the time to be, 1.15.4. We wanted to see outright pace and a dry track. We haven't seen that, but what we're seeing is great entertainment. Here comes Tandy across the line now. A 16-2 is his best lap, but at the moment only good enough for fifth position. Yeah, lost it in the middle sector, did uh, Nick Tandy somewhere. Nasa will be the next car across the line. And then it'll be the 0-1 of Sebastian Borte, who's getting a lovely tour down the back straight. I think that'll probably be enough to give him a little bit of a tour. It's in second at the moment. Lost ground in the middle sector again, did Borde there, 41-8. And he's pinning. Second behind Delatraz. Delatraz stays out and goes through and 15 4 or 2 Oh, now had he already taken the chequered flag? He's taken the chequered flag twice. Oh, now. Let's see if he... I'm not... Here he comes in the pits now. He, so, he was one of the one of the first cars to take a checkered flag, isn't it? And so it, it is going to be Wayne Taylor Racing, and this gives the number 10 car the lead of the championship. Joe Bradley down there with Wayne Taylor uh, Racing, uh, Wayne Taylor Racing with Andretti Gro Global. Wayne, Wayne um, you, you're congratulating the team because that was a team effort. Oh, it was an unbelievable team effort. I mean, with only literally one minute and something left, we had to come in and. Uh, they did a tyre stop that was really second to none. He's just bending down now to greet the car at our feet. What a driver, what a lap. Huh? What a lap, my God. Oh, man. Incredible. Yeah. I think he said it all there, incredible. He's, too, he's, uh, he's now, now going around the side of the car to greet his driver and congratulate him. It was Louis Delatraz who put in that blinding lap. And you guys were calling it, weren't you? You were saying, you know, has he got enough time to get heat into those wets? Just looking at the tyres now, they barely look, barely look scrubbed in, but it was enough, enough to put the number 10, Konica Minolta Acura, on the pole position for the race tomorrow. Fabulous sight, fabulous win. Yeah, just really, really excited. I mean, it could have gone, it could have gone so many different ways. I mean, we really thought the track was dry, we went out and the rain came and, you know, then we put tyres on and we sort of plateaued and we noticed everybody else was coming for a second set. And by the time, there was really not, not, not enough time for a second set, but he was complaining, so we brought him in and he literally had, he had one lap to do it. I know, incredible. Um, that, that will put you at the top of the table in the championship going into tomorrow. Yes. That's where Wayne Taylor likes to be, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Louis Delatraz's first pole position, Jeremy, and done on the most dramatic of circumstances. We didn't see the outright pace. In fact, uh, we had five LMP2s in somewhat better com conditions that were quicker than that time. But no lack of drama, no lack of excitement, no lack of entertainment there from the GTPs. It's actually for Louis Delatraz's first ever qualifying Run. Sesh, yeah. In fact, he's uh, yeah he's never never qualified the car before either in the GTP or last year in LP2. So a tremendous run uh, by by him. That was a really well well earned pole position and a tremendously exciting uh, end to that session. It's Acura first, and it'd be Cadillac second, BMW third, Acura fourth. The best of the Porsche is Nick Tandy in fifth position. So. Here's how it stands in GTP. It will be Konik and Minolta Acura on pole position when we come to the green flag tomorrow. Cadillac Racing, the uh, zero one with the gold front on that car on the outside the front row. BMW and Augusta Farfus. He went to the wet tyres first uh, and got the feel for them. His fastest lap on his last lap to the chequered flag. He'll start on the inside of uh, row number two. He'll have uh, former BMW driver Tom Blomqvist for company in the Acura number 60. Then it's Porsche Penske Motorsport. I thought they timed it about right, actually, but Nick Tandy finds himself in uh, fifth position with Conor de Filippi in the second of the BMWs alongside the 25. Then Philippe Nasa for Porsche 
Penske Motorsport in seventh on row, inside a row four with Pete Wodorani for Whelan Engineering Cadillac in the 31. In eighth, ninth, Mike Rockenfeller for JDC Miller Motorsports. And the 59 Proton car lost all of its times uh, for doing unapproved work during the session. So that will be effectively on the outside of row five. Were you entertained, Jeremy? That is the question. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I, would have, I was looking forward to a dry session, which I think would have been tremendously oh. exciting. But still, that was a lot of fun towards the end. I was glad that the uh, conditions kind of stabilised and allows the drivers just to improve their lap times and get us, extract as much of the speed out of them as, as was possible in those really treacherous conditions. So that was a lot of fun. So I head down to Joe Bradley, who's waiting patiently uh, for Louis Delatraz to get all the photographs, etc. Taken. Uh, that was tense down there, Joe. We could feel it, even from up here, looking across the the track towards you. But that was that was pretty intense. That it was incredibly intense all the way down this pit wall. The teams never stopped moving. It was ebbing and flowing. The constant movement from the teams. Let's get Louis in now. We've got a chance to speed him. Louis, congratulations. Your first chance at qualifying, and you do the job. And what a difficult job that was. It definitely wasn't easy. Um, to be honest, when I saw the rain coming in, I was like, wow, okay, that's a hard task. There's a lot on the line with the championship. And obviously, they trust me. And I'm really thankful for it to my teammates and the team. But yeah, when I got that last set, one lap, and I said, okay, I go, there's nothing to lose here, and, uh, and it worked out, so I'm, I'm super happy and proud of everyone. I mean, that was really on the edge, wasn't it? I mean, you, you just had one flying lap on that new set. Exactly, the, the team told me to, to pit, uh, because to put a set, I think some other cars did it, and the time was limited, I was in some traffic, had to back off, was supposed to have two laps, but just didn't make it over the line, and uh, that was at one lap, and uh, I pushed, I mean, I'm here for that, and I'm, again, super thankful to the team, who did an amazing job, strong car, Acura and, uh, and HPD did good, because this car is good in the weather. <laughs> You're on the pole position for tomorrow. You're also leading the championship. So just, yeah, I know, isn't that exciting stuff? No pressure then. Um, you know, what's the race pace going to be? Is it going to be similar to what we've seen? I mean, the most important part is, is tomorrow. There's 10 hours um, and the last lap will count where we finish at the end of those 10 hours. So I think we've worked hard to have a strong car at night. That's the, the objective. And I mean, time will tell. Um, but we're definitely going to give it everything and then the goal is to bring the championship back for the team. Outstanding job for you and all the team. Well done, guys. Motor racing is a team sport uh, and never was a better illustration of that there. Everybody had to have the communication right and the guys had to uh, get their jobs right. Congratulations to Cunningham and Elder Acura. Uh, the number 10 car will start on pole position for the 26th running of Motul. Petit Le Mans. Uh, earlier on, Ben Keating set LMP2 pole for PR1 Matheson in the 52 wins car. In LMP3, uh, it was Glenn Van Berlo for Andretti Autosport in their 36 leash year. And in the GT categories, Ian James gambled on slick tyres on a damp and very, very slimy track early on and put the Aston Martin vantage on pole position of all of the GTDs. In terms of the GTD pros, uh, champions elect Vassa Sullivan with the Lexus RCF GT put their faith in Jack Hawksworth and he paid them back with second fastest GT time and Paul in GTD Pro. Shea Adam, uh, Nick Damon and Joe Bradley were in the pit lane. Jeremy Shaw alongside me, John Hindhoff in the Global Broadcast Centre. Our team here at the track for technical support and our TV camera operators have had a brilliant day today and given us some great sights and sound. And we'll be back with warm-up tomorrow. Saturday is race day. Say it to yourself now. Repeat after me. Saturday is race day. And we'll be back to bring you all of the action from Matul Petit Le Mans on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Enjoy your Friday evening and be bright and early tomorrow when we go racing. Bye-bye.